going to do a video about how to draw a skull. Um, and I often explain that I've studied um, a lot of fairly uh, well-known sort of techniques, so things like Lewis Head and uh, Preston Blair's animation and uh, uh, the Riley method and a lot of uh, individual cartoonists and their handbooks like there is a, a, a how to draw comics comic book that I got when I was a kid had art by John Byron amongst others and and uh, I learned a lot from going through and reading those and copying the drawings and practicing the various techniques and then I also grew up around animators and, and stuff so I saw the way they did it and Early on, I learned a uh, constructive method for drawing the human head. And you start off by thinking about the shape of a brain. So you might want to look that up online. From the way I remember it, it's this, basically. And you got all the articulations. Um, so I simplify with that kind of thing. If we're looking at it from the side, it's that. And from above. Just so you can see the curves. I'll do it slightly and translucent. So this shape it's sort of like the silhouette of aviator glasses projected back onto the face it's pretty much the the symbol I use for an eye socket ire comes around to the top of the ear oh, hi, that is Ear lobes are very distinct. I think how many people fetishize them to make them even more so. Uh, but I find that even though you might not look at it, the shape of an ear lobe is something that has a big impact on likeness and on recognizing faces. Um, folks won't necessarily comment on unless they have particularly unusual ears, but I think the, the effect's there even when we're not really aware of it. So there's a tendon from the back of the skull forward. And if you think about the line from the forehead to the chin, I check the neck. If you're an adult male, you might have an Amazon apple, but otherwise... Which looks like that. Not the lower thing I did. Wrong place. But, not even everyone has a particularly pronounced one. I like that myself. So you've got a big chunk of... Uh, tendon muscles that connect to the collarbone. 
and there's a large group and there are some in the back but if you just think about a shape that's I get this from is partially anatomy studies, but um, also just sort of practicing and, and learning to think about body parts as symbols. So I call this a figurative uh, contour drawing. I'm drawing it in a kind of fast gestural technique, but using construction just to identify all the moving parts. So, continues, there's a muscles here, they're large in some people, not in me. Think about the temples, the brow, aviator glasses, with an upside down triangle here that's going to be one fifth the width at its base of the skull. Bullpark. Various. That's usually what you're aiming for. And then, you know, theoretically, the outside with that as you rotate, but when we're turning the skull slightly. So, da -da -da, and to this outward point in space. One, two, three, four, five. So, I tend to use a mix of shapes that I've developed that are kind of my own variant of. Riley method, but I, a lot of it are these shapes I'm doing now that are figurative contours of familiar parts. See that guy's nose. the inside gap you know if you look up close uh, it looks something like that and there's a tear duct uh, if you're looking at some of major descent they might have a hepatic fold kind of occluding it but otherwise you could think about it's usually sort of a pinkish color that fades into the eye a little bit and then there's a fold of skin which is pink so there's a, often a transition I and mean, that's kind of invisible unless you're doing a really tight close shot um, so I leave a gap that's my simple hack and then often I actually bring this up and leave a gap there too for that side and that's just a way of pulling back and not over defining what you're drawing So 
so the shape of the top of that I'm drawing is defined by the direction of the pupil because most people when you look a certain way because the pupil protrudes slightly from the curvature of the eyeball you get a that becomes the apex of the gesture of the top lid and this side of the nose I sketched it but generally you actually don't want to draw it so get get rid of that because it's a plane facing us, not an edge. Uh, these are even good to break up and float at this angle. So, is this curve? The space between where the nose for average. This is a a variation you can make though too. Like so that could end up looking like that with a wider nose or just look like that. These will vary, but there'll be some sort of correlation. Corner of the mouth reaches the apex, so the bone inside lives something like this. is usually about halfway down around the bridge of the nose. And then you have more bone, which I recall looks something like this. And I don't tend to rule it off, I just feel it out usually, especially for the human head. Just above that line typically, or below the line though, it depends on the structure of the ear. So again, you're going to want to look at your subjects here when you draw somebody, but for this I'm making it up, so I want it there, just above. This muscle usually rests about there, collarbone. Varies, of course. Some people have very big ones, some people very low ones. It gives you a long, the appearance of a longer neck. It's very rare for people to have more than the typical number of vertebrae in the neck, but it happens. So there are some people with actually taller necks, but mostly. We're all the same, but you see more or less uh, depending on posture and the size of that muscle. And I call it that muscle because right now I don't remember the name. I've copied them down, but I have a particular non facility for remembering names. So that is not something that I'm remembering right now. And it's not important. 
actually didn't bother I because I do have such a big problem with names I didn't bother really looking learning names when I was young and for something to draw I still was able to just visually remember the body by uh, drawing it and then having done it enough times I started remembering the names when I see them but I often don't remember what they are what I just want to say <laughs> which is just a product of my brain it's less apt by able traits So, plane the face. Jaws up. Why? Because so that's how the jaw connects. Is above the shoulder blade, um, above the collarbone. Sorry, and technically above the shoulder, the, the shoulder blades as well, which are in the back there. It comes up to, and if you feel the base of your neck, you're feeling. You can feel the top, some of the top ribs, the back of your body. You should practice drawing all the bones whenever you can memorize the shapes let's see breastbone and then the ribs come down Oh, they're always 
lower in front than they are in the back. Yeah, nice. Really catch the spot. And it is not true that men have some more than women. This is not a, this is not a thing. So your collarbone and your shoulder blade. I believe there's another bone technically in that assembly become the socket for your arms. So that's how I dry ahead. What, with all that context? Yeah. Well, I guess sort of the subtext here is uh, you actually want to study anatomy generally so that you can put the parts and how they relate and how they move because it has a lot to do with how they're built to move. Sense. Halfway by the way, so when we're looking at the side view, let's look at the actual side view. Okay, halfway of this. Face. Oh. There we go. Becomes the brow. And then the bottom of that is about where the cheekbones are. The ball shape. And then there is the teeth. In that zone. Think of an oval. Top of this bone. It's rocker shaped. Uh, I can't remember right now which one's bigger. It's roughly that way. Uh, and it comes down. Down like that. And the bottom of the nose is often a little bit protruding, although it doesn't have to be. That's a variable. And this socket shape always makes me think of aviator glasses. All right. If you think about them projecting back onto the skull and cutting out from the plane there, you get this shape, and that's where the eye lives. Push from there to there. Something along those lines. This goes back. That connects down. Usually see a bit of the top on there. So again in profile the middle of the brain case, top of eye, and that, double again, 
Bottom of nose, also this line can be bridge of nose, typically. Ball shape, jaw. I'm making this guy very brutal looking. Very large, I'm exaggerating the size. You could do smaller like I did there. Notice the difference where it comes down and there's a pinch to the shape. This is round. So I've given him a very large extra jaw. That could be as opposed to lower jaw. You know, bring the nose up, bring the mouth up, bring the jaw up. It's probably a little too small. Hairline is usually some form of forward movement of the hairline around the temple, but some peoples recede there. So that varies. Rhythm. That's how I draw a head. <laughs> 